I'm going to plot two different scatter plots on the same graph. If I highlight the x and y values, the independent dependent values that are next to each other, insert, I'm going to insert the scatter plot. You see it gives us a preview of what it's going to look like. Alternatively, we can highlight somewhere out here, insert a scatter plot. And this method helps when we want multiple types of uh, data to be listed. So select data now under the design tab. Chart range, you can actually give it a range, you just add a series. First series is going to be original data. You see that's how it labeled the blue column. With the X values, the independent variable values right here. Y values, the blue column. You could check three, four, six, nine, ten, one, four, five, six, eight. Check that it's the right numbers that are being used. Hit OK. And indeed, we have the same plot that it started off with. Now, for purposes of this video, we want to go ahead and model this using a line. There should be a line of best fit that flows right through the center here. So if we want to come up with our own model for the line, first thing we need is the slope. The slope equation looks like this. We've seen that before with y2, y1, x2, x1. And we just need two points in order to plug it in to the slope equation. In our case, we're going to find two points for this one and this one. There's several other ways to do it. We'll be a little more advanced with this later. But we're going to take the first and last point because it looks like if we connect those two dots, we'll have a pretty decent trend line. So if I take those first and last points, those 3, 1, and 10, 8, and then plug it into that slope equation, we should be able to come up with our slope. Here I'm going to go ahead and let Excel do the busy work. We'll set this equal to um, the first y value, 1, minus the second y value of 8. In the parentheses and divide that by the first x value or the corresponding x value. Oops. Parentheses 3 minus the last one, 10. Hit enter. You see we've got a slope of 1. This won't always work out that well. In this case, it does. So this is our slope of 1. Then we can come up with the equation for a line using either slope-intercept form, which is what most people remember, or the point-slope form, where we're just using that one point again. If we use the point-slope form, in this case, our one point was... Um, let's say 3, 1. So we'll take 3, 1 as our point, plug it in down here, so y values 1 equals our slope, which is 1 times x minus 3. If we add that over, we end up with our slope times x minus 3 plus 1. But I'm actually going to leave it like that. That way if we decide to change anything, we can still see exactly how this came up. And the reason why slope-intercept form is used so often and is helpful is because it's efficient. We don't need to be efficient when we're telling Excel to calculate something for us. So over here, for that dependent variable, I'm going to go ahead and type in that this is equal to our slope, which is 1. Or I can call on this particular cell. I'll go ahead and highlight this cell. So I can call on that particular cell, say this is equal to E2, but in order to make this always equal to E2, oops, even after I drag it down, I put the dollar sign in front of the E and in front of the 2. That locks this cell into place. So even when I drag this down like we've done in the past, this will always be the cell it's referring to. So that cell is my slope. We're going to multiply that by the quantity of x minus x1, where x1 was 3, x being this independent value 
directly across from the dependent value, minus 3, which is our x1, plus 1 to finish out the formula that we had on the other page. Hit enter, and indeed we get 1. It should make sense as to the point that we chose to be on the line. And we can drag from that little green box down here and get possibilities for these other points. So again, 1 and 8 were both values that we took to be on that line, so it makes sense that both of those will show up here. Okay. Last thing we want to do is try to uh, take our graph and display both the original data and that model data. I'm going to highlight the graph or click on the graph somewhere, go to Design tab, select data, and we'll add a new series. That new series will be the linear model with the x values same as our original x values whoops and the y values same as our linear or model y values again you can check to make sure that they're right also you can see back here it gives us an idea of what it's going to look like hit ok a couple times and then we can see that curve one benefit to having the slope here is now if I want to change this if I don't think that one is a good fit for this if because of these three points, it looks like it should be a sh more shallow slope. Now we can change the slope, say 0.9. When I hit enter, you notice that all these points move as well. Okay. So we can change that slope at will. Later, we'll be changing that y-intercept as well so that we can better figure out where that line should be. If we think that it should be more steep, we could type in steeper slope, more shallow yet, type in yet a more shallow slope. Obviously these don't go through the lines that we intended and it doesn't look like a good model, but the point is we can change this as we'd like. It automatically changes these numbers now and changes our graph. If you have any questions, please let me know.